It's the comeback that no one is particularly happy about and even less are aware of the manners that is walking our streets. HIV infections are making a return to our shores. And the numbers are ringing alarm bells across the country. Since 2010, Fiji has recorded a 260% increase in HIV infections making the country the second fastest growing epidemic in the Asia-Pacific region. The Ministry of Health's analysis of the data revealed that 245 new cases of HIV were diagnosed last year, the highest ever to be recorded in a year. And what has the health officials concerned is the fact that these are recorded cases. There are people walking among us who have the dreaded disease but don't know it, or if they know it, could be spreading it on the unsuspecting people they interact with. The number of new HIV infections since 2010 has increased by 260%. Uh, for the year 2022, Fiji reported 245 new HIV cases. This is in comparison with 151 cases in 2021. In terms of deaths, these have almost doubled. In 2022, he reported 46 new deaths in comparison to 25 in the previous year. And uh, what's uh, worrying is uh, in the new infections, 43% of young people aged 20 to 29. So in the new infections, this is the biggest uh, age bracket. And also 61% of new infections are in young men. The new health ministry figures have caused a bit of concern. But it wasn't too long ago when Fiji had a great track record in raising awareness and combating the spread of HIV AIDS. In the late 80s and 90s, even early 2000s, you know, uh, when I was a younger person, mm. uh, we were scared of HIV. As soon as you see the word HIV, you hear it AIDS. You don't even want to indulge in any activity that might get you, you know. So what what happened? Why did that campaign just like die away? Previously, we had a, quite a robust awareness program yes. that engaged uh, rugby players and various uh, um, uh, uh, members of the community that were held in high regard. Right. The the, the problem that I had was that there was it did not fall into a sustainable framework. Okay. Where, uh -huh. you know, there were key initiators of action that had to be held accountable right. for outputs. Yes. And it's to a large extent, we'll have to get that back in again, okay. but through the lens of a multi-sectorial uh, response. You know, back in the 90s or the early days of the HIV epidemic, there was a lot of um, push for prevention, especially because back then HIV was a death sentence, right? And here in the Pacific, we were expecting a big um, HIV epidemic to come. But because of that really intensive HIV prevention that was rolled out within communities, with faith-based organizations, workplaces, and so forth, even the parliamentarians would be strong advocates for um, HIV uh, prevention. This prevented any possible outbreak at that time. Unfortunately, with that, with our success in addressing HIV then, we became a bit complacent. And we have to remember that back then, most of the programs were donor funded, and these were donor driven. So when donors started putting their funds towards other priorities that Fiji was facing, that's when the attention on HIV and sexual um, infections generally dropped off and the momentum at which those programs were being run were lost as well. Mm. To some extent, at the time we had access to Global Fund right. for HIV AIDS and it was, we were supporting a lot of our activities. Okay. I think uh, Fiji went up to become, uh, you know, socioeconomically when our standing went up, yes. we fell out of the Global Fund uh, oh, okay. uh, area and then we were supposed to sustain the programs ourselves. Right. That's just one. Right. That's not the main, you know, there are a number of factors, uh, but I think the main factor is the fact that the service delivery model that we had developed yes. to sustain uh, multi-sectorial action mm. was not escalated high enough 
for it to be sustained over a longer period of time. According to UNAIDS estimates, Fiji and Papua New Guinea are among 38 countries globally with rising HIV infections. Permanent Secretary for Ministry of Health and Medical Services and the Chair for the HIV Board, Dr. James Fong has said that one way to combat the issue is to increase national screening programs so that the problem can be identified and dealt with accordingly. The other thing that we will also have to run through is the screening program. Yes. Once we've got the awareness going, then we will have to start doing a lot more screening. Right. The thing is, I think the, in terms of, of, of uh, people who are watching this space, yes. they need to understand that once we start screening, the numbers will go even higher. Yeah. Right. Mm. And that, you know, for us, the numbers going up is a positive thing right. because it creates visibility over the size of the problem mm. and it gives us more hope mm. in actually mitigating the rise in cases. Okay. When we see the cases rising from the new screening program. Right. So we're working on sorting out a screening program where people get registered. Yeah. The positives will be linked to a treatment program that will allow us to suppress the viral load. Right. The negatives will get linked to an ongoing support program that allows them to be tested more routinely. Right. Having unprotected sex is not the only concern. With school children resorting to hard drugs such as heroin, there is worry that students who share needles might also be of higher risk to contract HIV AIDS. I must admit, this is another difficult area right. because it's a relatively new area for us, although it's we've been well known for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, support programs for those who fall into that sort of uh, substance abuse. Eh? Yes. And uh, support programs for people who, have, who, who indulge in substance abuse, including uh, IV drugs, right. needs to include uh, the ability to screen mm -hmm. if they are indulging in that behavior. Right. Um, again, it does require a lot more work in terms of trying to ensure that they can come forward. Right, yes. That's and that's, yeah. uh, that's going to be the challenge. Mm -hmm. The other possibility is, and this is one of the reasons why the HIV program has uh, peer group leaders right. that are, that, or peer group ch champions. Right because then they can access the, those groups mm -hmm. better and ensure that they get screened more regularly. Dr. Fong said prior to and after COVID-19, one of the biggest barriers has always stemmed from stigmatization. This is why, this is where this discussion about stigma comes up, eh? Right. right. Yeah. Because right. it right. means that uh, the high-risk population have to be more visible. Right. Men who have sex with men need to be more visible. Right. Uh, uh, men, uh, people who indulge in unsafe sexual behavior need to be more visible right. so that they can get routinely tested. Right. And they need to be supported to, to be, we need to be less judgmental as to why they do that. Right. I get we need to be less judgmental about why they do that, that why they indulge in that behavior. Uh, I mean, uh, at the end of the day, yeah. you know, the final judgment is upon yes. he who decides. That's right. Uh, it's not on us. Yes. So we just have to deal with what we got. Right. And if we are less judgmental, if we can reduce the stigma, there's less judging. Yes. That means that we get, get better access into the minority groups. Okay. Or the so-called minority groups. Right. Or the hidden groups, better, more for, uh, for, better, for a better word. Right. And that, that allows us to escalate the screening program right. to actually pick up as many as possible. Okay. Okay. Stigma and discrimination is one of the biggest barriers that we have for young people, for anyone generally, to access HIV testing. And this uh, stigma comes from a lack of understanding about how the disease spreads, about what will happen to a person, and like people profile that only certain people get HIV, right? But it's basically linked with risky behaviors. If you know you had unprotected sex, if you were sharing needles with someone, these are the behaviors that cause HIV. And uh, people don't understand that. And this is something that we really need to um, increase understanding and awareness of because the stigma is only there because people don't understand how the disease is transmitted and so forth. With connectivity and internet penetration high in Fiji and across many other Pacific Island countries, 
the younger generation have easy access to social media platforms that can enable sexual encounters. There is now a push to use online-based applications to also raise awareness and educate Fiji's younger tech-savvy generation. Ten years ago, Tinder, Grindr, all these dating apps were not high in use. And the usual way of doing prevention work was you go to a festival, you go to a sporting event, you hand out condoms, you had physical hotspots. Now we have virtual hotspots. How are we working to link young people into care from these um, virtual spaces? And young people now, this new generation, they are very tech savvy. And that is how they want to gather information. That's how they want to receive information on safe sex practices and so forth. And there are many um, astounding, like really good examples that we have from other countries where they link um, using chatbots, mm. linking um, young people to services that they need. So these are some of the things that we're looking into, how we can use the virtual space to our advantage to educate young people to get about sexual health, about safe sex, and also linking them to um, services that are needed. And another area that uh, really needs strengthening in is uh, sexuality education. It's comprehensive sexuality education. It's called CSC for short. Mm -hmm. And it's about, um, you know, pornography is, does not cause new infections. It's about understanding what you're watching, yeah. knowing that what's the industry about. In the industry, you see that people are having condomless sex, they're having unsafe sex. But the reality is these people get tested all the time. You know, they know their HIV status. And these are the things that need to be shared with young people. And knowledge is power. So pornography, even banning it in the country, in the world, will not stop. Infections will not stop rape. It's understanding and empowering people with good information. At national level, government will need to have the political will to tackle high-risk behaviors and work more closely with key stakeholders, recognizing that to combat HIV and AIDS will require more than just prevention and treatment. These um, statistics can be very alarming, right? It can be very scary. But just know and be empowered by the fact that we have the Minister for Health who is really uh, committed to ending this crisis and having strong political leadership is the first step in successful programs throughout the world. Secondly, we have the technology that's needed. HIV is not a death sentence. There is effective HIV treatment called antiretroviral treatment. Once you know your HIV status and you get put on this treatment, and you're taking it consistently, you can uh, get your viral load to reduce. And it comes to an undetectable level. So when that happens, you become untransmissible. So this is called U is equal to U. So undetectable is equal to untransmissible. So this basically means that you would not be transmitting the virus to anyone else. You have zero risk of transmission to another person if you have viral load suppression. So even taking the uh, medication is a form of prevention. So this is something that um, is very empowering and we shouldn't be scared to know our HIV status. It should be considered as any other disease, like being diabetic and taking medication for it. Simple as that. It's another disease which can be managed. I think even better is the fact that government themselves, through the office of the Prime Minister, mm. have made it an imperative right. that HIV AIDS is uh, dealt with as a whole of government uh, exercise. Right. So this is, uh, that, that provides us that governance lens yes. that allows us to hold people accountable right. for ongoing action and not for to let it uh, fall through. We eh? right. really need a collaborative approach and a strong effort towards uh, really getting to the bottom of this um, epidemic that we're currently facing. So the Global Fund will be uh, re-entering in Fiji. Fiji used to receive funds, say, uh, 
more than five years ago for HIV programming. So as of 2024, Fiji will re-enter the uh, Global Fund program and we receiving funds. So that is a big plus. And we hope that other donors will join Global Fund and all the other players in uh, helping Fiji address its HIV epidemic.